Okay, this video today is going to talk about how you can get dirt cheap leads. Or, uh, in other words, sales, uh, if you want to just simply put it that way. For if you are selling products right now, whether you do PPC or not, this is the way that I do PPC that gets super high returns. If you're doing PPC right now and you're selling or trying to sell a product or products, this is going to be able to cut your cost per lead uh, roughly by a third by putting a little bit more work on your campaigns, but ultimately catering to what your customers that want to you know basically buy from you um, and just putting what you have in front of them in the places they're already looking for it. Um, so I'm going to go over what that strategy is in detail on this video, how to do it. You know, how to get that lead cost down a third of what you're literally paying for it right now. That also ultimately allow you to scale a campaign that's maybe bottlenecked. You can't really get more sales from it without spending more money uh, per sale. If you do sell uh, a product, you want to do PPC again. This is the way that I would say starting off by doing it. I've mentioned in other videos that um, your goal with the PPC is to get to break even or profitable as quickly as possible because everything is downhill from there. You can just recycle part of your profit into new campaigns, run those new campaigns for a while, figure out through your tracking which portion of those new campaigns you want to keep and which part you want to throw away. And once you have that, then you'll roll out another campaign. So basically, once you already have some profitability with what you're doing, uh, it isn't an investment anymore. Of course, you have an investment in time to run these new campaigns. But as far as the little the the money aspect, you know, 60 days in, you, you you're already you know done. And then ultimately, on top of that, you don't need to start out with much money at all either. It could be a thousand bucks a month. You could be up and profitable and self finance with a three thousand dollar investment. I've done this many times, depending on what you're selling. But uh, if you I, what I was uh, gonna say though is if you start out with the most profitable stuff that takes more time to set up instead of the easy stuff, you'll get to print baseline profitability much, much quicker than just doing what everybody else is doing and spending 20 minutes on your campaign like everybody else does starting out. Chances are you'll, sw you'll spend all your money, it's gone, you don't have anything to show for it basically if you do that. But if you put the time in here, you know, like, it's very realistic for you to put a $3,000 investment into what you're doing to sell your products and not have to spend any more money because you started out unlike what most, let's just say lazy people are going to do, which is not spend the time to set up a campaign that's going to serve their needs, uh, customers' needs in the way that they want them served. Ultimately, customers are selfish. They want what they want and um, get the profitability quick, quick, uh, quicker with way less money. And then, of course, that system, you don't have to roll it all out at once. You could do a small portion of what I'm going to show you here. Once it works, once you see it's proven, which I believe a lot of times what stops people from doing the stuff that I do on campaigns that I show people on these videos is they're not 100% trusting of what I'm saying. This, you can easily try it out for one or two small little things that you're trying to promote, see that it works, and then do it again and again and again build up a multi-million dollar a year uh, PPC campaign for yourself on Google and on Bing, of course. If you run Google and it's profitable, you should run Bing too. I say that on any other videos that I, I talk about Google campaigns, which we're talking about here. And um, build up a really nice campaign for yourself. So you, you could take a small sample of what I'm going to share you with your, uh, with your for you today. Use it for yourself. See the, you know, the potential in it and then go ahead and scale it up. So don't need to start out with much money. You don't have to spend much time on it at first at first until you see it's working because you don't have to do everything day one. And you know, you don't have to uh, ultimately spend much time also seeing if it's going to work as well. It virtually work right away, self finance itself right away from there and then you can decide who is going to help you scale out the rest of the you know, getting the results of this method I'm going to share which I also am a proponent of getting, figuring out the system that works, even if it, find the stuff that takes time to put together, test it out, prove it works, and then find somebody who can repeat the strategy on all the rest of the opportunities on, with that strategy that you can use, given that your 
competition is not going to do the strategy because they don't have the time to do it. You're just going to figure out what works and then you're going to hire somebody to build it out knowing how much value there is in it then at that point. So if you hire somebody, you can already factor out, okay, here's my return. Here's what I got to pay them. Makes sense to have them do the 100, 200 hours of work to build this out. And that's how I'm doing things here anyway. And that's also how we're at Guarantee PPC able to guarantee results for our client because we do the stuff that nobody else is willing to do and we have an efficient process set up where we can scale out really large campaigns that are really good for our users that ultimately that want to buy our clients products and services and this is just one of them so anyway without further ado I'm going to talk about um, you know product companies out there how to get your dirt cheap leads and this is targeting people who are primarily doing their research on buying a product so I'll, you know, 80% of the time someone spends online in that surrounds a, you know, going into a product purchase more, uh, you know, of course, the higher percentage, of course, the higher the cost of the product. They think on it more. They need to ultimately also do more research. Um, during that time that they're doing their research, you could basically just be the one that is there first. And then ultimately, if they're trying to figure out which one to buy or how to buy it, you could be there also first and you're going to be the one that then gets this not only the sale but get, gets the sale way cheaper than anybody else because you're the only one in these spaces doing it and i literally do mean that you're going to you, and so ultimately what this is about is lowering your competition that should be kind of your prerogative with all your ppc if you want higher than average returns and i'm talking about much higher and so that's what this is as well namely because people are you know they're they're skeptical if it works, so they don't do it, and they really don't want to put the effort in, so therefore they just convince themselves uh, it won't work, and then they just never try something, whereas you, on this video, after you get done watching this, you are uh, definitely going to try this and see how much capability this has to bring in sales and then scale it out, like I said. Try, just try it out with a little, just for a little bit for yourself. See how much this getting this reduction in competition is going to have for you to sell the same exact products that you're selling now but in a different way can work to actually, you know, generate again, millions of dollars a year in sales is, is that what's at stake for you with this here once it's been scaled out. So anyway, with all that said, I'm going to go through a short list of things on how to execute this strategy now, uh, how it, and give you some point of reference of how I've done this before. So you can kind of see how it would work or should work. Uh, ultimately the do's the don'ts that kind of thing so you can walk away from this video with the actual information you need to do this for yourself today anyway the first thing on um, I'll mention on this video here about the strategy so I as, as I mentioned before as long as you sell a product whether you're a local company national company doesn't matter this is gonna work and I'm actually gonna talk about local companies that sell products and national companies that sell products individually uh, by that by themselves because the strategy will vary a little bit based if you're you know local or national basically there so with that said if you're a local company you know you're talking about being able to use these this strategy I'm going to give you here to drive in-store traffic originally surf, searching for what ultimately is somebody searching for national information or national products let's say so Again, this is about tapping into people doing the research a little bit more. So, you know, of course, if you sell, if you have a local medical supplies business that you're selling to, you know, elderly, um, disenfranchised, um, you know, people would say, uh, people are going to look for products. They're not expecting local companies to ha even have an, an inventory online, but also to have information about those products. So they're, what are they doing? They're searching nationally for that information. You're going to be able to want, be the one that steps in, and you can't. Maybe you can't compete with the big boys out there with the information they're providing. That's not what this is about. But there is a way to interject yourself in the process so that the you can cherry pick the best users out of that stream of traffic, so you can get them into your shop in a way that all your local competition won't literally be doing. So you're the one who capitalizes on all those easy sales. On a national basis, if you're running a national like e-commerce company or whatever, sell products through your site, you're going to drive traffic with, with what I call, uh, as I mentioned on one other video here that I made, virtual SKUs or virtual products. In other words, 
you're going to take a product that you're selling on your site. A lot of people think, oh, I have the product, I have a product page. There's only one way to sell using this product I have. You put a product there and you drive traffic to this product page. On virtually every service campaign that I have, I'm going to make copies of the page that I have that we're driving traffic to. First of all, I'm going to have a page for every category of service that I have so that individuals, if you know, you're gonna, your, your house has been flooded, they get to a page that talks about you know, helping you out with that versus if your house burned down, you're a restoration company, you're going to get to a page that helps you with that because that's just the first step of what it actually takes to get good results. If you send everybody to a catch-all page that handles both of those individually, your conversion rates get hit. But on top of that, I'm actually going to take it one step further, that same idea, and for our fire damage page, we're going to make a page for every basic keyword that we have. So if it's uh, fire damage restoration companies, my page, I'm going to have a page that says right in the headline, fire damage restoration companies. Why? Because you're going to get another 40% more conversions for the same money just by doing that. And that doesn't take much time once you actually have the system br broken out and in place and you have somebody else copying the pages for you and then putting them into a campaign. So that's a gimme for me to be able to guarantee results on our clients' campaigns here. But in, in the product space, a lot of people don't realize they can take a product page and just like I described with the services, make copies of the page so they can have different language in the headline or subheadline. Uh, basically, the pro in this case, product title or a, a, a subheadline, if, if you want to say that, or just the, the second most dominant text on that, pa that product page. They can make a different page with different language there to cater to a little bit different traffic source, so they're going to get more uptake. But unlike the service uh, campaign example, where I'm literally going to have the keyword in the headline there, because um, that's what traditionally just by default works there the best, and why and what I'm using there in the product space, we're going to specifically be talking about users who are looking for general solution. Um, if you sell wall anchors, you know, where, where you hang a, something like this on the wall, pictures, um, there's different types of wall anchors. And for the most part, the consumer doesn't know what a three quarter inch wall hanger is and what a butterfly wall hanger is. But what they do know is they need to hang a really heavy picture and it, that weighs 50 pounds. So you'll see if you study and you're in that business, a lot of people searching for like a 50 pound plus something that can hang I need to be able to hang a 75 pound picture what do I do they'll ask that question to Google or they'll be a little bit more sophisticated How, I need a 75 pound wall anchor if you sell products you can make a copy of your page that says 75 pound wall anchor even though it's the same product as you have before you've created a virtual product that caters to that exact person. And you're going to target both of the indic the situation uh, type user types I mentioned before, one of which who don't even know what a wall anchor is yet, and you're just going to direct them to the page that gives them the solution there. Um, and also the person who, of course, makes, makes a search and, and knows that they need something for 70 pounds or greater, um, that kind of thing. And so you can make one for 70 pounds, 80 pounds, 90 pounds. It's almost nothing to have another page on your server like that. And the user, it's your page ultimately is so targeted for that exact person. And you've effectively eliminated all your competition there that you're going to convert at double, triple the rate, literally triple a lot of times than you had before by doing that. And it doesn't really take, it's not rocket science to do that. But anyway, you're going to use these virtual uh, SKUs or virtual product pages, if you want to say that, or a second way that you're going to be able to tap, tap into people looking for information to sell more of your products that you have on your site is by becoming a quote unquote consultant. A consultant would be, you know, essentially, uh, which I'm going to describe here in a minute, but somebody looking for what you'll find a lot of times if you sell products that aren't very self explanatory, which most companies fit into that category the the housewife needs, knows that she needs to hang a picture and she's doing some research herself trying to do the research herself maybe she's a single mom or something and she's searching for that stuff 
And then she maybe she finds out on a help forum uh, or from a friend that you have to have a wall anchor. And then so she goes online looking for a wall, a wall anchor. You can actually, and this is something virtually nobody thinks about or does, which is why you're going to give it a try potentially. If somebody types in wall anchors, you could have a ad that says wall anchor specialist. Talk to, talk to a wall anchor specialist now. Free help with your um, picture or you know light lamp hanging needs. And then <clears throat> you ultimately take them to a landing page that has a form that ask a question. They can call or you could have live chat. And when I say live chat, don't just wait for them to engage in the live chat. You could do that, but you get the most results. I just know because I do this all the time. By having a, a chat box like they used to have a long time ago and then people got lazy and now they expect people to have ch even chat bots to talk with a person. Anything that's automated like that, you it doesn't work because people get immune to it. So you're going to have a chat box that pops up immediately as soon as they hit the page saying, yeah, uh, hi, I'm, I'm Dave, uh, I'm a wall anchor um, specialist. How can I help you? What kind of, what, what are you trying to hang? And it, that question by default gets put out there so you don't even have to type it in and then you're just waiting for somebody to type and then you try to get them on the phone you make the sale now a wall anchor is a little different obviously you can't probably make it financially feasible to talk to every single person about a wall anchor but anything where you're selling two hundred dollar plus products where ultimately like it or not that person's probably going to call anyway before they go ahead and put their purchase through just so that they know they're dealing with a real company so they could trust the company and they could track that company down if they have a problem with their order. This is just one way to do it. Uh, uh, per, me personally, on something usually like a, I will have the product shown there and then I won't do this particular method, uh, except or unless we have head terms that we can't uh, capitalize on. So and some niches are, are narrowed down enough already where we can send traffic to a product page every time we're not gonna use this consultant approach at all. Uh, but let's say you are in a, a space where you're selling lab equipment. You may only sell certain types of lab equipment and that's fine, but if somebody's looking, they get a purchase order from their company saying that they now have to put lab equipment in this lab that they got and they have a million dollars to sell and they're looking for lab equipment sellers, but they don't, you know, the, they're kind of clueless. That typical person who's going to make the purchase is clueless. Just have on there lab equipment you know setup specialist if they type in lab equipment suppliers so that you don't otherwise because if you try to send people to a product page that quote unquote head term or they're not specifying it's not really profitable and they'll get to your site they won't know what to do they'll even if they do know what to do a little bit you're wasting your time you're going to educate them they're going to leave they're not ready to buy yet at that stage whereas if you can get them on the phone that person virtually, you can talk them through the whole thing that they're going to have to do on their own anyway by looking at a bunch of different sites all at once and where you would use something like that. So that's another way that you can sell products at a third of the rate that somebody else is going to be able to sell them for. Uh, in the lab equipment space, they're going to have a, a uh, blood um, assay machine and they're going to target that keyword and, so, and try to send the person to your blood blood assay machine equipment category page would say with your, all your blood assay machines there but guess what so is everybody else who has a blood assay machine nobody else is taking the approach that they're going to, to get the person before they know they need a blood assay machine and have more equipment to buy or when when that situation arises and you're going to get that person before they can get lost anywhere else everything about doing the ppc is about as long as you're talking about expensive products where people have to do research typically is getting that person to stop what they're doing and control the situation and I don't, i'm not a controlling person but you want ppc to work that's what it is that's what a landing page is always supposed to do it's supposed to get the person not to go back to google and do something else because if they do that they might come back you could run remarketing ads potentially they'll come back but every time they leave there's only a percentage that comes back and so if you want to maximize your investment you got to do something that gets the person productively to stop what they're doing and then, you know, start getting them to, you know, to, to far enough along the sales process with you that they don't ultimately ever go back. So anyway, that's a couple things. Now, 
And on the local, for lo going back to um, have a diagram here that'll explain a little bit better just what I just said here. So you know how to do it for yourself and just a couple more examples so you understand how this works to be able to get leads for a third of the typical rate you would for any other typical PPC strategy for a product seller. For a local company, you know, typically if, as I talked about before, you're gonna tap into people who they're looking for information on a particular, let's say they, uh, they're looking for a stair lift for their company, you know, the things that go up and down the stairs uh, that allow uh, people that can't get up and down, old people that can't get up and down stairs, equipment to go up and down. Normally people are gonna look for stair lift companies if they're gonna get that because they know inherently a local person's gonna provide that. But sometimes they're gonna search for uh, something like a Stana, which would be a brand of stair lifts because they wanna do a little research on the stair lift that they buy. They don't want to just rely on the salesperson that comes out to them from the local vendor who sells multiple brands so they can get some unbiased information either way. So they'll search for the item or they'll look for info on the item. They'll type in the brand name of or the product name into the search bar. So Stana uh, stair lifts uh, review, something like that. And then you're going to pop in there and you're actually going to say, we are a local um, dealer of Stana products. Come check out our catalog. So that that doesn't really help the person that does want the information, but what it does do, it says, makes the person go, hmm, okay, well, I was already interested in that, and I know if I'm going to go locally here in Denver, this company does sell it, and it'd be, why don't I quick check out what they have? So you can interrupt that pattern that they were in. And then when you get them to the page, you can get them to where potentially they'll just call you and then bang, you got them. So you get, in that case, you would take a person to, and, and a lot of other, most other um, situations where you're gonna do PPC like this for a local product company. Um, well, you'll take them to a landing page that has a picture of, like let's say the outside of your store, and then it says, it has a map there above the before you scroll that shows where you're at physically within the city and a phone number and a form that they can fill out and contact you but then also they can see that not that yes you offer stair lifts but um you and and stana stair lifts in this case we offer stana stair lifts here we are if you want to ask a question now you can if you want to see what the Stana stair lift uh, uh, options we have available, you can click here and go to our catalog. So now that person knows for sure you got it out of the way. Yes, we're really local, so you don't have to wonder that we were pulling some kind of scheme on you here, uh, and that you can ask questions anytime. And then now we'll go look at the catalog, and when you go look at the catalog with the Stana uh, products, you can decide to call and ask a question, and your call to action on the product pages should be talk to, a, you know, a stair lift expert now, and obviously the best thing would be talk to a standard stair lift expert now locally at your Denver hometown store. Call to actions should always be as specific as possible. Not always can people do that, but that would be the way to get your maximum conversions. And then as, again, people already know that you're local and they can go back and go to your store at any time. So when they get to the catalog, all you're trying to do is get them to call, but at the same time, when when they get there, if they go back to do some informational stuff before, you've got them in, involved enough in the process that a remarketing ad that tries to get them back to your original page you took them to, with the same kind of message, with local Stana provider in Denver, highest rated local Stana provider in Denver area, should work on them to the point where they are ready, you got that person. So versus Competing with people that are just, you know, typing in stair lift company, which the cost per click is 10 bucks, stand a stair lift will be like $1.50 a click. So you could see the arbitrage uh, opportunity you have there. So you have this intermediary page you take people to, like I said, that lets them know you're local, that you can talk to a stair, uh, stand a stair lift uh, expert now if you want. And if you want to look at our local inventory that we have in the store, you can go to this inventory page and check that out. You can do that as well. And then of course, uh, when they get to the catalog page, you're giving them a constant ask in, in a delicate way that, hey, you can stop wondering at any time about these products. You can just call us and we'll tell you about these products, anything you wanna know. 
So that's for local companies. For national companies, I talked about this already uh, briefly, you're going to have a product page and then you're going to make copies of it for different use cases, if you will. People, reasons that people use that product, pe reasons people install that product, so that when a person's looking for a product that can do what they need, your product's going to show up first under those keywords that are much cheaper than products that describe the, excuse me, describe the item but are a lot more expensive. Uh, one example that I, I ran an e-commerce business selling a, a, like a supercharger uh, for a car, um, supercharger kits at one point in time. And what we did here is we're, we're, we are typing, having, we were just capitalizing on someone typing in like Honda Civic supercharger kit. Uh, you know, 1.6 liter and you know, 1991 um, EX, all that stuff. So when someone types that in, we know very well what they want and we'll send that person to that product page. And that product page, instead of just saying supercharger kit that works for Honda, da, 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 it just says Honda Civic EX 1.6, all that same stuff that they typed in, it's there. That person doesn't have to go back and Google at that point. They found a product that'll do what they want. Obviously, sometimes people go back and they check on pricing, but you know, in that case, by the way, a we will beat any price kind of solves that as well. So, and in um, the I gave an example with the wall anchor uh, situation. You could have if somebody was looking for 75 pound picture wall anchors, you could have a virtual product. Then you make a copy of the of the, the wall anchor product have one that says picture wall anchor that serves anybody looking for anything to do with the picture wall anchor. And then you make copies of that picture wall anchor page, one for 80 pounds, one for 70 pounds, and have that 70 pound maybe as a part of the sub headline. So you're, it says picture wall anchor, good for anything 70 pounds and above, directly below it. So it doesn't have to just be the product title that you can change there. Uh, upon making a copy of your page for certain people searching for certain use cases of what they're looking for, but it also can be the, sec the second most dominant uh, line of the page because ultimately they're, what, when they get to the page, they're going to have three, four, five, upwards of eight seconds to decide, am I going to stay on this page or am I going to leave? And so if they see right away what they were looking for to use this product for, they're going to you know, ultimately mostly you know have the opportunity to have you have them stay and everybody in that amount short amount of time that five seconds that they're going to give you will be able to read the headline and the sub headline every time so you have you don't have to just stick it in the product title you could put it in the sub headline uh, as well so you, you know of course now you understand that kind of strategy that i use and you can do it for yourself to get about a you know a third of the lead cost or uh, cost per sale cost on what you're doing there, of course, you'll get a tripling of the amount of opportunities to speak to a person that way as well if, if normally they have to call you before they're going to buy the product. So either or if you want to say it that way. The other thing is about the consulting. Um, if you're a national company, I talked about this a little bit already. Landing page, instead of offering the product or have your product page, we'll have a call to action to offering the help only. I talked about how to do that with the wall anchor. Uh, space, how to do that with the lab, laboratory equipment. Again, usually what I'll do is I'll, is I'll do a combination. If they're looking, especially like if you offer a custom equipment, let's say you offer custom electronics equipment, uh, they're going to be looking for a custom, uh, let's say, uh, custom P, uh, PCB uh, equipment for assembly line. Um, you People who know what they want will type in specific you know, terms about specific PCB equipment that they're looking for, and you would, I would then send people to that product page, but if they're looking for custom PCB equipment, specifically when they use custom or um, packages, stuff like that, a lot of times I'm gonna also test then right away with, the, with those, not just head terms, but people looking for an all-in-do-it-yourself solution also as well to a page that just, 
immediately tells them to call us or talk to us via chat so we can tell you what you should need versus trying to send that person to a product page which that person's probably has no clue what they're even looking at and it'll be a much more efficient way to do things but so on head terms usually is this is where you're going to go you could technically if you didn't have an e-commerce site and you wanted to sell a new line of products this would be a way to sell them right away work out the kinks and what you're doing and then have all your product pages set up for for that category if you're not sure if it will work or not yet assuming of course you have a good salesperson and as a side note about selling products online if uh for the most part, you gotta have someone knowledgeable on the phone that can talk a user through their problems and explain that yes, this product can do what you want it to do for what you're doing. Uh, if you're selling stuff for a couple hundred bucks or more and those type of questions usually come out and they usually call or email or something before they buy. Uh, if you have that, you use this technique here, literally virtually 100% of the time, you can get a good producing campaign that will self-finance itself at an eight to one, 10 to one return um, once it's set up because this is so efficient. Uh, just in general, you know, with either of these national campaign uh, promotion options I gave you here that if you can't make it work, literally just let me know and I can tell you where you went wrong, which is put it that way because it, it works enough. So you can't just send it to a, you know, a, a secretary that says, what would you like to buy? Because usually that's your differentiator if unless you're the only person that offers what you're offering in your space. This is especially true if you're a dealer and there's multiple dealers of the same exact make and model of products. So your only differentiator is your consulting that you can do over your phone. And yes, it's hard to find somebody to do that, but again, that's your differentiation point and you can create a system because once you have a system to train people to do that for you, you can scale a campaign to five, 10, $20 million a year just through PPC ads doing stuff just like I talked about uh, doing it at a product you know search at a time and analyzing on each individual users ask finding what they need and then giving it to them and having a salesperson ready to go and take all those leads and close them in an effective and productive way in a repetitive repeating or repetitive way that you can control and it is controlled the last thing about this before i wrap this up you know the, the i would not um I talked about like in the example with the lab equipment company where if somebody was looking to buy lab equipment suppliers, we're going to send people to a standard landing page or something like that. Uh, if you're not selling something, you a lot of times with that, you should probably consider having a separate landing page for each category of item that you sell. I mentioned if you had the blood assay equipment, if they, were make, if they knew that was was the type of lab equipment they want you could set them to a product page and that's what i would do there uh, but let's say i sold just hardware general hardware i would not send hey if you're building something or you're constructing something give us a call that would be too general in that case you would want to send to a person to a page if they're going to buy a, a small shed uh, something like that but you also sell lumber you sell this and you sell that um, i'm going to create a page um, specific to the application so that because otherwise it's just not going to be that compelling and if it doesn't work try to go a little bit more refined with that and the, what the page you have set up that page will just have if you're going to consult somebody about uh, you know buying the materials then that particular material there should be a picture of that on the page that where you're trying to get the user to interact with you right away just if it wasn't apparent already that's what you usually have to have done and obviously if you're targeting people that are just doing construction overall and you don't know what they're doing it's a little hard so for that user right when they hit the page to visually know in that three four five seconds you have before they leave and go back to google and decide am i in the right place can these people actually for sure help me that um, the visuals if they're not there it's tough to get the person out to leave even if the text is done right uh, and even if you say we can help everybody even if you got da 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 it's just a lot harder to do because people usually don't read stuff. What people will usually see is the headline and the picture. And if the picture and the headline is on, and of course, headline and subheadline and picture, if those are on point and you've, you've niched it down to where those th three things are matching up fairly close with what type of problem or thing that they're trying to do, you've got them at that point in time. Of course, you have to carry the rest of the thing um, promised to them through make the sale but that gets you you can't get the sale without getting 
having the starting without getting started and that gets you started so most of the time anyway hopefully that makes sense um hope you enjoyed this video i have a lot of other videos like this about other ppc strategies that i use to guarantee our clients results at our firm i also have a blog at guaranteedppc.com blog that gives you if you'd like step-by-step -step instructions on how to build winning campaigns uh, mainly on google but on facebook and some other platforms as well ppc platforms you can check that out and maybe that'll work for you as well or if interest uh, to you as well and uh, apart from that if you have any questions about you're trying to sell products you're trying to get your lead cost or your cost per sale down what is just starting out whatever thinks had some things you, you think that i should have went over but i uh, ultimately didn't leave a comment down below i will get back to you i get back to every person who leaves me a comment on this channel about to, to point you in the right direction and where you need to go with things to, so you can go ahead and use this for yourself what i've intended from the get-go in making this video but uh, hopefully it inspired you to you know, like I said at the beginning of the video, to try this out on a small scale basis, see how much it actually works, and then ultimately use it to, you know, the fullest advantage long term and generate eventual million, seven figures a year in sales, which you actually can do when done all the way, the right way for your company, and find a formula that works.